Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Pokemon Blue. Uh, last episode, I made a big hubbub about which fossil Pokemon you should vote for and which psychic type you should vote for, and I'll probably uh, keep those links in this one's description as well, because right now we have to pick between one of these two fossils, so this is like an elimination round. Out of, like, Omanyte or Kabuto, whichever one gets more will get picked. And then once we get to Cinnabar, it'll be, I'll look back at this, and it'll be Aerodactyl versus whichever one has won this. So, even if by the time we get to Cinnabar, and if, like, another one's gotten higher, if one of these was picked first, they just got, the other one got nixed. So, here we go. Right now, uh, we have three votes for Aerodactyl, two votes for Kabuto, and one vote for Omanyte. So... We are going to be voting for Kabuto right now, which means Omanyte will get cucked, unfortunately. So when we get to Cinnabar, it'll be a fight versus Aerodactyl and Kabuto. So let me check the straw poll one more time, see if anything changed. Nope, so out of Kabuto and Omanyte, Kabuto is the winner right now. So we will be taking the Dome Postal. Sorry, Lord Helix. Praise be his name. <laughs> Alright, then this is mine. I really wish you could battle this guy, like, after you beat the game, and he would have, like, a fossil team or something. Like, that'd be sick. Far away on Cinnabar Island. Yep, there it is. There's a Pokemon lab. They do research on regenerating fossils. And there you have it. Ugh, more wild battles. But, yeah, by the time we get to Cerulean, I don't, if you vote for Jinx, I'm pretty sure we won't be able to get him until we have the Good Rod. And if you vote for uh, Mr. Mime, I think we can get him right away. See, the great thing about traded Pokemon is that they get boosted experience. So whichever one will be, we'll be leveling up mega quick. Hey, look, we're finally out of Mount Moon. <laughs> oh, another sexy burp. I know you guys love them. There's got to be a hidden item here. There's, there's no way there isn't, right? Yeah, great ball. So in Fire Red Leaf Green, I distinctly remember there being two move tutors. One who teaches Mega Kick, and another teaches Mega Punch. And I, I don't know if they're both here. It might just be one of them. Camo 4. Is this one Mega Kick? Let's see. Oh, whoops. Whirlwind. Okay, so I guess the Mega Kick, Mega Punch guys are only in Fire Red Leaf Green. Alright, I was just making sure Zubat's up front. Alright, we have made it to Cerulean. Pretty much. Notable things here, you got the bike shop, which they tried to sell you a bike for a million dollars. I'll show that right now. It's kind of ludicrous. Hi, welcome to our bike shop. Have we got just the bike for you? It's a cool bike. Do you want it? One million freaking dollars. Sorry, you can't afford it. Come back again sometime. We will be able to get a bike later. We just have to uh, go do a little bit of a side quest. But as of right now, I'm going to heal. Healing up, healing up. So... Uh, if we go up, we have a rival fight and we take on the Nugget Bridge. Or we can rush it and go straight for Misty, but I think I'm gonna I'm gonna save that. Alrighty. I think if we go up here, we, this is the guy who gives us the polywhirl for the uh, the jinx for the polywhirl. No, this is a bad guy. We do not care. Up here you can find a rare candy though. I think it's here. Rare candy, where are you? There it is. The hidden items are pretty easy to remember in this game. Just because there's not much. If you look over to the left, that dude looks like he has an afro. <laughs> like a really tall afro. Good stuff. There's a lot of do here, actually. Uh... We can go up and talk to Bill, and then this guy will get unlocked, and then we can go get Dig. And we can actually go straight to Vermilion if we want to. Or we can fight uh, Misty right now, but I'm just going to do the basic route, and we're going to go up, and we're going to fight Blue. 
Yeah, we're looking sauce. Let's just go. Yo, Simon, you're still struggling along back here? I'm doing great. I caught a bunch of strong and smart Pokemon. Here, let me see what you caught, Simon. See, this isn't true. He has two Pokemon that are utter garbage, and then he's got two horrible monsters. This is the first horrible monster. Just like the original Pidgey, it'll spam Sand Attack, but now it's Buffer, so... Yeah, that's kind of horrifying. I'm just going to go for a Supersonic and see if I can confuse it. Oh, that's going to hurt. That hurt. Hurt pretty bad. So I'm hoping when it's spam sand attack, it just accidentally hits itself in the face. Confusion, like, I can get it. Like, in the anime, they're, like, flip-flopping around and they got swirlies in their eyes. Like, they don't know what they're doing. They're just, they're confused. That's what it is. It's like, they're just very dazed and dizzy. But with some Pokemon, I don't get it. Like, Pidgeotto, like, Take, like, Machamp, like, you flip around, you slap yourself in the face. Like, I kind of get that, but it's a bird. It has wings. I feel like it'd flop on its back and just be incapacitated. Oh, no, not Sand Attack. No. Okay. No hacks. I believe he's going to send an Abra. Abra, yeah. Okay, this Abra cannot use any other moves beside Teleport. And Teleport doesn't work in Trainer Battle, so this is just free EXP for our good Zubat here. Yeah, anytime you take on this guy and he's got his uh, Abra going on, literally, just send in a Pokemon you want to level up and they can just steal him for experience. Later on in Let's Play, this thing's going to be a problem because Blue's Alakazam is a monster. Gets like Psychic, some other pretty strong special moves. Alakazam's broken in this gen because if you don't know, modern day Pokemon, you have Attack, Defense, Special attack, special defense, speed, and HP. But in this game, there's all the other ones, but special defense and special attack are one stat called special. So if you have a really good special attack or really good special defense, they're both great. So Alakazam has a super high special attack, like it's like 130 or something. So by extension, he also has 130 base special defense. So he'll tank special moves, and he's really fast, so... Be loud speed and just murder him. Just switch Edward out. Uh, you won't be seeing this Rattata for much longer. There's one battle where it's like Eradicate, and I think that's on uh, the SSN, but then after that, it's pretty much rumored that Blue either boxed it or it's dead. Everyone thinks Red kills him, but I don't, that doesn't make a lot of sense. To me, at least. Edward's leveling up. Wing Attack is garbage in this gen, like it only does 35, but I feel like once we get it, Zubat will be quite a bit better, just because he'll have Stab. I forgot to switch him out. Wait, 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 wait. This is a four-time week to bug Pokemon in this gen. Talking about last round, I was re-watching yesterday's video, and like, there's like a perfect level of volume for me. Like, if I'm a little higher, it'll crackle on the computer mic, but I'm pretty sure if I just sit back like this, it won't do anything. This should be four times effective. Yeah, uh, that's pretty modest. I just, I'm wondering why he doesn't have a fully, like, an Ivasaur yet. Because I'm pretty sure they all evolve at level 16. I know in some gens it gets pretty weird, like, fully evolved, like, evolution levels at least, like, so you get Typhlosion at like level 36, same thing with the other two, but I'm pretty sure you get Feraligator and Meganium at like 31 or 32, like weirdly low levels, but you have to wait longer to get a Typhlosion. But Cynical evolves into Quilava at like level 14, which is earlier than the other two. Johto's weird games. Like, the original Game Boy Gold, Silver, Crystal are, like, actually some of my favorites. Like, I feel like they're just very fun. But just like this game, they're pretty jank. Nowhere near as jank, though. They, like, they're pretty refined. I'm just wondering, like, a timeline where if Pokemon had started out on the uh, NES... Oh, what if, what if Gold, Silver, Crystal were on the Super Nintendo? That would be sick. Show me his rare Pokemon. That added a lot of pages to my Pokedex. <laughs> my cats are fighting. Although when I think about it, I guess 
red, blue, yellow, and gold, silver, crystal would all be on the NES, and then ruby, sapphire, emerald would be the SNES games, but uh, I don't really care. Smell you later. Classic line. I'm going to heal up. I have a big thing about healing up. I always like to have all my PP, haha, stock, and all my HP filled up. It's just a good habit to have. And saving, healing up, like everything in this game, it's generally quick. It's not as, like, drawn out and long as it is in other games. I really like healing your Pokemon in Sword and Shield because they do it in Sun and Moon too, but everything's so grainy in that game. Sword and Shield has, like, those cleaner-looking models, for the Pokemon at least. And you heal up your Pokemon in 3D and you see your whole team. I think it just looks nice. I have a lot of thoughts about Sword and Shield. Like, I think the battles look great. Like, all the Pokemon models, like, even though they are stolen from Sun and Moon, they should be new models. They, like, they look pretty slick. I feel like they took the models and, like, painted on them, which is kind of cool. And the character models all look great. Like, all the human characters, I think, look really sick. But just, like, the grass. I don't even mind the ugly trees, to be honest. Just the ugly, horrible grass. And when they're trying to do pathways... More so the wild area. I don't think it's as bad in the actual routes, but I'm I'm pretty hit and miss with that game. Like I think some parts of Sword and Shield are pretty beautiful, even though I'm not a big fan on the like outlines. Like Let's Go didn't have outlines on its characters and stuff, but Sword and Shield does. But there are moments when I look at Sword and Shield, I'm like, wow, this game's actually really pretty. Mostly just the wild area, though. That game's not super up to date with Switch graphics, I'd say. The new Pokemon Snap game, like, the trailer came out today, it looks gorgeous. Like, if Sword and Shield looked like new Pokemon Snap, I feel like that game, it already sold, like, hotcakes. Like, people bought it regardless. But I feel like if Sword and Shield looked like how new Pokemon Snap does, it would have been probably one of, if not the best-selling, like, Switch games out of all of them. Not taking out Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, I feel like that's just a titan that'll never be beaten, but... It would be like, I'd say second game, just because of how impressive it would look. Also, can we talk about new Pokemon Snap? That game is, oh, it's so gorgeous. It's beautiful. I'm not a fan of the name of the uh, region, though, the Lentil region. <laughs> Pretty sure Lentil is like a type of fruit or, no, it's not a fruit. It's like asparagus and stuff, like a green, a greeny, stringy, vegetable food. Not a fan. Asparagus, for real, though, pretty delicious. But just the word lentil makes it sound so not good. Fun fact, uh, some people have a certain, like, gene in their body that gives them the ability to smell asparagus in people's pee. But some people don't have it. <laughs> Which is, that's a, that's a weird evolutionary trait. Is it, like, a mutation thing? I don't know. Some people have it, some people don't. But yeah. Have someone uh, eat some eat some asparagus. Don't have someone else do it. That would be gross. Eat some asparagus. Take a nice, comfortable piss, and then you know, give it a good sniff and see if you have the uh, the gene or not. Tell me how that works out for you. But yeah, human body, wondrous thing. So many, so many wonderful abilities the human body has. Fun fact: I actually uh, I have an extra rib, but it's not like. A full-on rib, like one's longer than the other. It's like a little tumor buddy who's on top of another one. Like, I'll take my shirt off and you'll just see this tiny little bump on the right side of my body. And it's it's kind of funny. I forgot I had it for a couple years. Like, when you're a kid, you have to have something to brag about. Like, something weird. Like, that one kid who can roll his thumb or <laughs> make his eyes go cross. Like, stuff like that. For me, like, when I was six, it was the extra rib. That was my flex. My, my weird little tumor on my rib. And, like, you get so used to parts of your body, like, you don't even notice them. I got to, like, teenage years, so I didn't even think about it, because you don't really brag about stupid stuff like that anymore. But recently I was looking in the mirror, and I'm like, oh, shit, this is something that's a part of my body, and I have totally neglected it. So, yeah, I got my, I got my rib tumor buddy. I should give him a name. What's a good name? I think he's Kyle. I can imagine it. I used to drink energy drinks like a Kyle. Like Bang Energy, honestly, Bang Energy should be illegal. There's so much caffeine in that. I'd say it's the closest you can probably get to like illegal drugs that are legal. 
like drink a bang or two, you will be off your rockers. And that like feeling you have after chugging one where it's like I don't remember what it's called. It's when you drink a lot of caffeine or like an energy drink and then burnout. Burnout. The burnout you get from drinking a couple bang energies is so intense. I'd say it's comparable to like the feeling of after actual drug usage. Cause it exerts so much power on your body. But bang, it tastes so good. I have so many thoughts on the bang flavors. Like, if you're strong enough not to get a heart attack, I'd recommend, like, trying one at least, just because, like, they taste so good. Don't drink any more than that. I feel like they're very comparable to your health. Like, not good for you at all. But, yeah, they they taste mega good. Cotton candy, delicious. The unicorn shit or whatever it's called, delicious. Blue Raz, mmm, good. Sour Heads, it's literally Sour Patch Kids flavored. It's amazing. Star Bomb, that's just a rocket pop. Fourth of July memories. But yeah, if you have the ability to not have a heart attack on a contact with caffeine, try one bang energy. Don't drink anymore, <laughs> but they're good. I'd recommend Sour Head or Blue Raz. They're my favorite. There's also a cola flavor, and that one's pretty dope. I only ever find that at marathons, though. Weird thing I've noticed with soda pop, like, I drank a lot of soda. I'm not a big fan of water. Surprise, surprise. Teenager loves his junk food, but I drink a lot of soda pop. And in Michigan, where I live, ginger ale is really popular. Like, I love myself some ginger ale. There's a big, uh, big ginger ale brand called Verner's. And they give out Verner's at McDonald's, shops, everything. Like, Verner's is just a regular part of the Michigander life. And I went to Florida this past year before COVID hit and everything. I went to a McDonald's and I asked this lady for a Verner's and she looked at me like I was just so stupid. And there was that brain dead moment where everyone's eyes are just kind of flicking back and forth. And I had to explain to this lady what a Verner's was. And she just looked at me like I was crazy. And then eventually I was just like, I have a Sprite. And that was that. It was pretty awkward. Definitely not one of the highlights of my life. I just wanted a nice ginger ale. I don't live in Florida anymore like I used to. So I don't really remember if they even have like a ginger ale brand. Maybe Canada Dry or something. But for any Floridians or like Alabamans or any Southerners out there, what ginger ale you guys got? I want to hear. It's good stuff. Dude, the vanilla ginger ale at the Coca-Cola machines with all the special ones. Another thing, those Coca-Cola machines, like, I'm a Pepsi man, but those things are dope. Best things, you got Diet Ginger Lime Coke. That's a goat. Try that if you haven't tried that. Diet Ginger Lime Coke is amazing. And then you got Vanilla Ginger Ale, which is also amazing. I love that stuff. Anytime I go to the movie theater, or at least when I used to, when that was a thing, oh, large popcorn, got that white cheddar on it, extra butter, extra white cheddar, get a large drink. First time you fill it up, you get the diet ginger lime, you chug that baby. Second time you go out during whatever boring makeout scene in the movies thrown at you, fill it up, get some vanilla ginger ale, chug that baby. Next kissing scene, whatever's happening, fill it up, get another round of ginger lime. That's a perfect movie right there. Honestly, I love going to movies. Half the movie experience is just the junk food. Popcorn is a drug. Ugh. And the white cheddar, just like cocaine. And there you go. Hey, look, we got our nugget from Nugget Bridge. <laughs> By the way, would you like to join Team Rocket? We're a group dedicated to evil using Pokemon. Want to join? Are you sure? Come on, join us. Some cult stuff right there. I'm telling you to join. Okay, you need convincing. I'll make you an offer you can't refuse. Oh, I'm dying. Anytime I start recording, I just, I turn into a burpy old man. <laughs> Rocket wants to fight with his big old whip. Is that implied that they actually, like, straight up whip their Pokemon? I just realized, they look so like Waluigi. Oh, damn, we learned Bite and I didn't even notice. I really get what, like, Hoodlum Callum and a bunch of other, like, gaming YouTubers have said, where, like, once you start playing and just talking about something random, you go full autopilot. Like, I remember nothing from the last four battles. Let's test out Bite. This is going to be a staple move. Bite's actually a normal type move in this gen, because Dark doesn't exist yet. Oh, no. Rap. 
rap, rap, rap. Rap is rap in this game is broken because literally you can't attack every turn it happens to you, and it's like it lasts a whole bunch of time. So it's pretty much a way to stall out. Like if Zubat could learn rap, I would just do Confuse Ray, Toxic Rap, and we could stall through any bot battle, <laughs> bottle, water bottle, water battle. Ooh, I feel like. Zubat really does look like a Dasani water bottle, doesn't he? Like, this Zubat, like, the sprite, he looks like a straight-up paper towel. No, no capping on that. But, like, the color palette, you got the blue, you got the purple, you got that lighter color. <laughs> Next time I catch a Zubat, I'm just gonna name him Aquafina or Dasani or something. I'm more of a Dasani man, personally. Probably because of the bottle, like, they're smoother. Like, I, I drink an Aquafina, and that thing just crushes in my hand, and I'm not a fan. Although I barely drink water. When I do drink water, I just, I load it up with Mio flavoring and stuff because I'm a child and I don't like things that taste like sugar and fructose corn syrup and flavor. This whole episode has literally just been about soda pop and junk food. I love it a little too much. Same thing with fast food. I eat so much fast food. This is a tangent. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna drop because I feel like We've been recording for 21 minutes right about now, and all I've been talking about is Soda Pop. With all that power, you can become a top leader in Team Rocket. All right, right down here is where we catch an Abra. So I'm going to pause real quick, and I'm going to find an Abra and catch it. Just on the off chance Mr. Mime wins, so I don't have to come back here. So I will be right back. I found ya. Uh, so Zubat died, and uh, Gamera gained a level, and he learned Bite. So that's better than tackle. But yeah, this thing will only knows teleport. So the first move it'll use is teleport. Like it'll get out of here immediately. So we're just gonna have to chuck a ball at it and just let that be. If it gets out, we have to find another one. All right, okay, that's all right. Okay. All right, we got another one, boys. Here we go. One. Oh, come on! Alright, here's another one. Let's hope he doesn't run away. Come on, please, get in the ball. Just get in the ball. Oh, come on! Okay. Here we go, another one. It's only been like a bajillion years. Please, just get in the ball. Please. No! Okay. 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 Last time's the try. We have one Pokeball left. If I don't catch this thing, I don't know what I'll do. I don't know what'll happen, but I, I it's not gonna be good. It's gonna be very bad. Okay. <sighs> I, I don't want to talk about it. I'm just, okay, we'll, we'll, um, I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry for everything. I, let's just go back to the Pokemon Center. We will just save that whole escapade and on the off chance Mr. Mime gets voted for in the straw poll. Link in the description. But yeah. That happened. That was that was something viewed by human eyes that will never be unseen. But you know, it's we're all we're having good fun here. But like, yeah, I guess that's a bust. I'll get more Pokeballs next time if we have to do that. Which will probably not be next episode, but definitely the one after that. 
Right here is Thunderwave, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, TM45, Thunderwave. No one can learn it, though. Pretty sure. Yes, no one can learn it. Oh, well. It's got to keep on trucking, I suppose. Our psychic type will be able to learn it, I'm pretty sure, though. So that's going to be good for catching and stuff. Because there's quite a bit of legendaries in this game. Well, not really. There's only four. You got the three birds and then Mewtwo. But I guess that's a decent amount, considering how catch rates work in this game. Speaking of rates, uh, the critical hit rate in this game is very interesting. It's based completely on speed, so the faster you are, the higher chance you have of getting a critical hit. So, like, a really fast Pokemon, like Persian, will, like, pretty much land crits all the time. And uh, it's got a move called Slash. This is a pretty famous thing. Slash is a 70 damage normal move that has a high chance to critical hit. So if you give it to a Persian, uh, pretty much because of Persian speed and the high crit chance on Slash, it'll crit every time. And crits do double, so that's a 140 damage move with the double. But it's also normal, so you get the same type of tag bonus. So it's 140 times like 50% more damage. So it's just a crazy, crazy powerful setup thing. It's When this game was competitive, like in its earliest days, and it was usually just stadium play, but... Yeah, Slash Persian was pretty broken. Also, I learned that the move Blizzard has 90% accuracy in this game, which is awesome. So we're definitely going to use that, in addition to Ice Beam. Later on, there's going to be a girl who gives us Tri-Attack, Rock Slide, and Ice Beam. So that's, that's pretty poggers. It's pretty good. Oh, dang. We're sitting at 26 right now. I say we go back and we heal up one more time. And then we will call it a day, because I want to be ready and prepared for the next episode. Well, we're all healed up. Let's read the sign says, Cerulean City, a mysterious blue aura surrounds it. Yeah, like all this color, all this nice gray, black, and white. But I think that ought to do it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and vote for the psychic type you want. I'm Simon from the Caps, and I'll see you tomorrow.